I get asked these same questions about the stuff I do all the time, but there's one question I've only ever been asked once, which was, how do you go about running with your dog? And I thought that is a brilliant question that I would love to answer in a video. I'll wait for a few more people to ask it, and therefore there'll be some evidence that it's of general interest, and no one else ever did. So I thought, screw it, I'll do a video for one person. Now, a warning, I am not a dog trainer, I am not a vet, I have never worked in a zoo. I have owned many pets and never killed any of them in error, although my daughter did once neglect a hamster to death when she was about nine. There's no photos of the hamster, that was a guinea pig. I don't know what happened to the guinea pigs, I think she swapped them for rats in about 2008. My point is, I am not an expert. My credentials for giving advice on animals is limited to say the least. Bottom line, this is just what I do. And my dog is still alive and well and pretty good at running. So copy me, copy him at your own risk. Five steps to running with your dog. If you don't already have a dog, pick wisely. I did a lot of research before selecting mine because I wanted a dog that could run 5Ks because I was doing mostly park runs, but also a dog that could run a little bit further in case I upped my mileage. And importantly, I wanted a dog that would run at my pace. There are plenty of dogs out there that will tow you along behind them at a rate that you could never run at on your own. In fact, the world record for a 5K with a dog is faster than the human world 5K record. But a dog like that is of no use to me because I also want to be able to run alone. And I don't want my pace varying wildly depending on whether I'm out on a training run with him or on my own. I wanted a training partner. I didn't want to be Santa's sleigh. So Nixon is a Parson Russell Terrier, which is basically a long-legged Jack Russell. They were bred originally for keeping up with the hounds and the horses to go fox hunting. And he is absolutely perfect. He runs at my pace. He can get under 20 minutes for a 5K. He has run marathons across mountains. And I haven't seen a fox in ages. So just be sensible. When I was researching this video, I found one running website and their suggestion for a good long distance running dog well, the first three were Weimaramas, German Shorthead Pointers, and Wieselers. If that is your plan, slow down, because once you are clipped onto one of those three, you aren't slowing down. Interestingly, their fourth suggestion for a good running dog was Nixon, so they clawed back some credibility there. Just remember, it is all relative. If you are thinking of going from the odd 5k park run and stepping up to doing maybe the occasional 10k, you don't necessarily need a long distance running dog. Someone suggested to me when I first started running that if I was going to get a dog to go with, I needed a husky. A trained husky will do a hundred miles a day towing a sledge. I don't need a husky. I've been to plenty of dog running races where people are attached to big fast dogs and where it is a runner that wants to go at warp speed, that is great and it is epic to watch. But I've seen an awful lot of people getting dragged along behind their dog with zero control over the animal. They have zero control over the direction they're even going in. Even at my weight, with Nixon being a small dog, going downhill on descents, if he is pulling hard, I am unstable. Nixon, dude, you are killing me. The combination of a big fast dog and a lightweight runner is a potential nightmare. Just remember, ultimately, most dogs with training can build up to running along with most humans. 10,000 years ago, they were a wolf and they can all run just fine. And if you're thinking, hang on a minute, I've got a miniature dwarf cockatiel doodle pug and that can't run at all. You may well be right, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, get it one of these maybe? I don't know, my daughter's the rodent expert. And even if you pick the right type of dog, sometimes they just don't want to run. Nixon has a brother, Jefferson. We got them together as puppies. And a very important point here, do your research, talk to your vet about when your dog, if it's a puppy, can start to run. Especially bigger dogs, you do not want to be running with your dog too early, too soon. Very, very bad for it. Talk to your vet. Anyway, Nixon and Jefferson, both trained in the same way. Nixon grows up to be a mileage-crushing beast. Jefferson grows up to be the laziest ass dog I have ever known. I'm going for a run later with Nixon. I'll do a demonstration before I set off. Jeff, do you want to run? Do you want to run? Do you want to run? 
Just be doing a run. Doing a run. Nixon. Doing a run. Doing a run. Doing a run. Jeff is just a dud. Don't run with your dog in a regular lead and collar. Clip into a harness. First of all, it lets the dog know what is going on. When Nixon has his running harness on, he knows his job is to run. Shift your butt, do not stop until we cross the finish line. When he has his lead and his collar on, he knows his job is to walk sensibly. If I took him for a walk in his running harness, he'd be a nightmare. But the bigger issue is safety and comfort. If you run with your dog at some point, you will fall over. I have fallen over more times than I can remember. And if you go down holding on to a dog lead, then your problem is bigger than the fact that you're now sat on your ass looking like a dick. Your dog is <coughs> off. So number one piece of kit is a belt. Option one is a simple belt. Advantage, it's simple. It's what I use. The disadvantage is that it is like getting constantly jabbed in the kidneys if it's tugging around your waist and you have a big, strong dog. I'm fine, but my dog is a tenth the size of me. You've got a larger animal, it might not be suitable, in which case you should consider a running harness for you. The advantage of a running harness, which is a little bit like a climbing harness if you've been climbing, is that it puts the weight or the force, the pull, lower down your body. You're basically being pulled across your butt and across your hips and not your lower back. Not only is that far more comfortable, it's also more stable to be pulled from a lower center of gravity. If you have a big fast dog and you're a lightweight runner with one of these on, you will fly along. It's what Jenny uses when she's running with the dogs. The two downsides that I experience are that it's obviously a bit more of a faff to get off and on, and also your dog does need to be running out in front of you because of the way they're designed. And then you need a lead, and hopefully it is obvious that you need an elastic one, not a fixed length lead. There are times when you're running and you need to correct the dog if it's going in the wrong direction or slow them down. You need to have some cushioning to that command. So an elastic length lead. I clip mine to me with a carabiner because carabiners are cool. Sarah, don't look down. Keep looking at me. And then you need a running harness. I know people do run their dogs in collars. I don't like it. This is Nixon's. It is a bespoke dog running harness, lightweight and made just for the job. When you're off-road in particular, the harness just becomes essential. Nixon is often jumping over logs, he's clearing ditches, he's weaving around stuff. I don't want him jumping over a puddle or clearing a ditch, coming to the end of his leash and choking himself around his neck. For smaller dogs, they're also really handy for hauling your dog about. I'm often lifting Nixon over fences and over gates and stuff. In the summer when he's overheating, I can drop him into a river, haul him back out again, and we are off and running, cooled down. And that is it for kit. The only other stuff that we need is a means of me carrying water and snacks for longer runs, but that's as much a need for me as it is for him, so I deal with lugging that around. If you've got a bigger dog, you can actually get a running harness that will have pouches built into it so your dog can carry some of the gear for you. Nixon is a little bit small to be acting like my sort of personal donkey, though. Okay, here is what I taught Nixon and what seems to work for us. From when I say go, until we cross the finish line, or get home if we're training, run. That's it. Stay out in front of me and run. Don't stop, just run. It sounds pretty straightforward, but it needs to be trained. When Nixon was young and first learning, we would run, walk, run, walk as we built up distance. But even on the walks, we would not stop. So no sniffing, no admiring the scenery, and no interacting with other dogs. He needs to know that dogs exist and are out there in the world, so he needs to be socialised to them. Very important, obviously, socialise your dogs. But to me, that's no different to him knowing that motorbikes or trees exist. They are just things that are out there that he might encounter and he needs to ignore. There is nothing more frustrating than trying to run with a dog whose mind is elsewhere, and that behaviour is learned. When Jenna walks with Jefferson, she will stop and talk to everybody. She'll come home with tales of the life story of some old lady she met with a spaniel called Edward. Consequently, when I then run with Jefferson on the occasions that I'm forced to, he's an absolute nightmare. He'll see people up ahead and he'll assume 
we're going to pull over and find out what their husband did during the war or something. It does my head in. So a big part of teaching that focus is just to teach that that is normal. If you do something normally, it becomes your normal, which actually is good advice for 95% of human health and fitness too. As far as Nixon's concerned, this is just how we run. He doesn't need much command and instruction. That's just what we do. But we do have two instructions that he does understand. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? The first is ready, and it just means that. Are you ready? Head in the game, focus, lock and load, we are out of here. Basically means, do you want to run? To which the answer is always yes. If I say ready at the start of a race, he goes berserk. If he stops for a drink, a toilet break, and by the way, when I said earlier about no stopping, clearly the dog is allowed to stop for drinks and toilet breaks. Ready means, are you done? Are we good to go? And when he is, he'll let me know because he'll go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go, 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 go. And the second is go, go, go. And it sounds a bit of an obvious instruction, but it's more than just what it sounds like. And it's more than just for him as well. Go, go, go basically means let's shift it. Move your butt. If he's going a bit slow, go, go, go lets me know if there's a problem or if he's just being a bit lazy. Because if he's just being a bit lazy, he hears go, 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 and he'll instantly pick up the pace. Go, 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 let's go, 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 go. And hopefully, with all that vocal encouragement, your dog will get used to sitting out in front of you, which is where you want them to be. Every time I've ever fallen over, it's because Nixon has been running beside me. Every time other dogs have got in the way on runs, it's because the owner and dog have been side by side, with then an elastic trip hazard between them. On a couple of our first runs, we had occasions where I'd go one side of a lamppost or a tree, and Nixon would go the other because we were side by side. So even more important when you're running off road with lots of obstacles. When Nixon was younger, every time he would naturally find himself in that position, I would give him loads of encouragement, loads of praise, lots of go, 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 lots of well done, so that he knew that's what I wanted from him. And now, nine times out of 10, he'll just put himself in that position every time. I can see where he's going off road, I can let him pick the line that we're taking, and I can monitor him as well. Is he looking fresh? Is he starting to look around for a puddle because he's wanting water? How's he doing? So let's assume that you picked the right dog, you waited until it was old enough, mature enough to run properly, and now you're up and running. You still need to be careful because dogs, especially ones that love running, are very good at running way past the point where they should probably have stopped running. They're also really bad at shedding heat. People often ask me, how far can Nixon run? I've got no idea how far he can run. I don't know how long he can run. He's done four-hour runs, he's done marathons, he's run across mountains. I expect if I kept on going, he'd keep on going until he dropped dead, or I dropped dead. Either way, that's a bad day out. He can't drive home on his own for a start. So get really, really good at watching your dog and knowing what is normal for your dog. When I look at Nixon running, I know if he is okay. I know what his pace looks like. I know what his stride looks like. If he's to the side of me, is there a problem? If he's behind me, what is the problem? Is he wanting a toilet break? Is he looking for water? Is he just tired? He will get tired, especially on things like steep climbs off road. Often him going up steps and jumping over rocks is the equivalent of me clambering over six foot high boulders. So learn what your dog looks like normally so you can spot what's not normal. And water, dogs get hot fast. Even in the middle of winter, Nixon won't run in a coat and within 10 minutes, he'll be looking for a river to jump in to try and cool off. Overheating is a way bigger problem for him than being too chilly. So if we're doing any sort of reasonable distance, we either take water or we do it by water. In fact, all of our marathon runs have all been done along the side of a riverbank where he can just jump in, cool off, get a drink anytime he needs to. And if we're off miles away from water, I'm carrying it. It is far better for a dog, in fact a human as well, to be constantly having a small amount of water available than gulping down loads in one go and then expecting to run on afterwards. And again, just like us, don't run the dog on a full stomach. If we're going out, he has had at least two hours since he last ate. 
exactly the same for me. We'll take snacks and he will eat on the really long runs, but it's only small nibbles every half hour or so at the very most. Pretty much what I'm doing. Lastly is recovery. Nixon will do five and 10 Ks all day, every day. But if we go and do something out of the norm, a marathon, a really fast race, an off-road trail run, a mountain run, he's taking the next day off at least, the same as I would. And again, know your dog. Are they getting out of bed looking a bit stiff? Are they not looking as fresh as they normally would? Do they have to sleep for hours after your last run? Again, know what's normal for your dog, spot what isn't normal, and just be sensible. Oh, and nearly forgot, keep an eye on their paws, on their pads. Are they sore? Are they cracked? Especially if they're running on the road, especially in the summer. Nixon uses a product called Musher's Secret, which is a wax design for Husky's feet. There are probably other products available that do just as good a job, but none of them are called Musher's Secret. Last one, competition. Do it. Just do it. Find a race. Enter it with your dog. It is amazing. You turn a solitary pursuit running into a team sport. There is nothing better. If I had to give up all of my exercise bar one thing, I would keep running with Nixon. Park run is probably the best place to start. If you want to go for slightly longer runs, it gets a little bit trickier. But look around. Look on the internet. Ask on Facebook groups. Email the organisers of local runs. I've done that sometimes for runs that didn't appear to want dogs. I asked if I could come along with mine. And they said absolutely no problem at all. So those runs are out there. And of course there are full on canny cross runs which are just for dogs and humans. And if you think that that sounds a little bit hardcore, do not worry. They have every combination of human and dog going. I've seen some very odd looking animals at those events as very odd looking humans as well you will not be out of place and lining up at the start of a canny cross race is an incredible experience 20 or 30 or 40 dogs all just going completely bonkers because they want to run <laughs> if you're a dog lover it's an amazing experience the sight and sound is incredible if you're not a dog lover it will not make you a dog lover you'll think they're all nuts and a tip to make racing safer and more fun for you more enjoyable start way further back than you think you need to. It is far easier with your dog to move through a group of people than to have lots of people overtaking you and coming past. Even when I was running 22, 23 minute park runs, so faster than most of the people there, I would still start with Nixon right at the very back and we would work our way through the group of runners. Far, far simpler. It wasn't until we knew we were going to be in the top 10 overall and certainly the fastest dog that we would start right at the front knowing that we'd just be off and out of everyone's way. That is it, how to run with your dog. Target audience, one person. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you're now wondering where my daughter's video is on rodent care, that video does not exist.